so far, by the way, this podcast is just like chum for mocking dudes who do like uh we're not doing financial advice but this has the vibe of like i sleep one hour a day <laughs> brunch hit it boys what's your favorite footy scram Footy scran, please explain that to me. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I thought I, no I was. Su- I thought that this was gonna be like, a, oh, someone just found out about footy scran. We're always talking about footy it. Footy scran, footy scran, it's footy scran. Is it like a? Is it S-C- a, a, R-A-N. a? Is it an abbreviated word? I think this word, just or is it be- just British? I, it, oh, it's for sure British. Yeah, but is it like a? Br- is it? Like the full word, like Scandinavia, <laughs> yes, or, uh, Scrandalicious or something. Scrandon, Pennsylvania. Yes. they call me the uh, the they, Scrandon. Scrandler. They call me Michael Scott because uh, I get a scran ton. <laughs> I get a ton of scran. It. I, I'm pretty sure it means provisions. Provisions. Okay. So footy scran is grub you get at the footy match. Okay. I, I'll tell you what. I believe we talked about this once upon a time. Uh, I forever ago gave up caring about following a certain amount of people. Once I blew into uh, quadruple digits, yeah, I I got yeah, who gives such a, a light follow button. Plus, I mean, plus like now with Twitter, like you Before don't get to, you, you don't get to see your the people you follow anyway. So just we said that follow earlier. everybody. I showed you a tweet and you were like, you probably saw that because I retweeted it earlier and I was like, well, I definitely didn't see it because of you because right. I follow you. Yeah, that's right. Um, I got it from the for you page. You are anyway. for sure more likely to see something that you don't from somebody you don't follow than somebody you do now. It's crazy. I think so. Well, I saw Footy Scran because of uh, the I, I was t- uh, tweeting about soccer so mm-hmm. i'm a big uh tree head now yeah uh, and i'm a ham s- forest guy which I, I do i do respect that choice uh, is it going to change if matt turner goes elsewhere or i don't know maybe I already you'll feel, develop i already affinity? feel more of a connection to this than i ever did okay. to chelsea or arsenal chelsea it was just because i drove a hyundai and my friends were chelsea supporters uh <laughs> i no longer drive a hyundai mm-hmm. and matt turner no longer plays for arsenal so i don't have any kind of flimsy reason now Matt Turner is playing for a team that going into the season, the only thing I knew about it is that they are like a bubble team and mm-hmm. we're probably going to be fighting relegation. Definitely see more your speed. All in on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that at the beginning when you were trying to help me find a team and I just never really landed on one, if I had landed on Nottingham Forest, you probably would have been like, oh, that's fun. Yes. Yeah. 100%. And I know it's like it's a weird justification when you're talking about Arsenal. But like the reason that I picked Arsenal was because... They never win. Mm. Like, they're always in the top five, like, top ten area. They're the area. Chargers. Yeah, like, essentially. And they charger the shit out of it last season. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, I was, like, I kind of, the, the thing that I always told people back then is, like, I missed the Red Sox element where, like, the Red Sox were a beloved franchise, like, a storied franchise. But they were the fucking losers. Everybody laughed at them. And they were competitive a lot, but they never won. And They're I missed... ruining my summer. Yeah, exactly. You and remember that? Yeah. 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 And I and I missed like cheering for the lovable losers. And so that's why I picked Arsenal. Yeah, I think that that's that's probably a more common tale than Boston sports fans are willing to admit. That they I, missed I, that? Yeah. Like, I, I remember I was writing for, I want to say Fox Sports or CBS at the time, but right after the Cubs won the World Series, I was like, Cubs fans, cherish this moment, but I think you're going to miss being the losers. Yeah, I big time agree with that. Like When the Bruins won the Cup, uh, I know that I was like being professional about it at this time, but I was like, holy shit, the fucking Bruins <laughs> won the Cup? And like my like our parents saw the Bruins win the cup and stuff, but like the Bruins don't win the fucking cup. The mm-hmm. Bruins let you down. They piss you off and they put together a team that you fall in love with the, and the, then they fuck it up. It's so weird because I like I don't feel like I had that experience with the Bruins when they won. Maybe I was just like a little bit too young and every other team was winning. So I was like, okay, now great, it's the Bruins' turn. But like when the Bruins won, and it, and it's not like I had just become a new fan because like i grew up with like the shitty high school teams i grew up with like my first heartbreak being them trading joe thornton for fucking nothing like i had some bruin bruins eraser but go on bruins 
I think the pr- I think the problem was uh that I hopped on the Bruins bandwagon or like Bruins fandom like for real like for serious when they were shitty so I was still really excited about those shitty Bruins teams so there was never like a like a a time when I wasn't excited about the Bruins yes I mean I was kind of the same way with the Celtics the I really 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 got into the Celtics the year before they lost the lottery the second time like I didn't really care too much in the Tim Duncan days but when they were not tanking (laughs) <laughs> and Paul Pierce got hurt and Tony Allen got hurt. Like I loved that year's team. I loved that when Paul Pierce was out, Tony Allen had to be the guy. And it was like Al Jefferson, Tony Allen, Delonte West. Oh man, you could build around all these it's guys. It's kind of fun. I was like, I can't <laughs> wait till they win the lottery, yeah. add someone who's actually good. It elevates all these guys. And they lost the lottery and I was fucking devastated. Yeah. And they turned it into this old geezer team that I was like, oh, this isn't going to be as fun. Right. But then they had Kevin Garnett on the team. Imagine going from that heartbreak to the next year you're like the annoying old favorites. What an experience that was. So I definitely agree that once you once you do it, a little something of the magic is lost. Like well, everybody loves the chase. The chase. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Everybody loves the chase. Everybody loves the chase, and everybody like loves feeling like you're the underdog and nobody believes in you. I always think about bands, and it's kind of different now. I could have just ended it as I always think about bands. But I always think about like with bands, when it goes from like if Aerosmith in 1995 was working on an album, it's so much fucking different, or it has to be from like, come on, guy, like we gotta get some songs together, yeah, like and we gotta like we gotta we gotta prove to everybody, and jo- Joe, you're gonna try your hardest on this one, right? Hey, Joe, I need you to come in with a killer solo. I got just the thing. Like, everybody loves the feeling like right before it's about to pop. Like everybody loves feeling like they're on the gr- like essentially the ground floor of something before it it goes skyrocketing to the top. Like that's why I'm in love with the Buffalo Sabres oh, right yeah. now, man. <laughs> I'm in love with the Buffalo Sabres because they're going to fucking pop at some point. And once they do pop and everybody loves them, it's going to be less fun to be all about the Buffalo Sabres. It's already reached a point though with the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, there's a saturation. And not point. to uh not to do a hockey show, which one day the gods the the the, everything's gonna turn out and we we will do that shit but uh not to just full-blown make this a sports show uh it's already kind of reached a everybody's in on the yes Sabres i tweeted thing. about that and today I, you didn't see it are you, you follow me yes no you didn't i absolutely did what did you, did tw- you say that i tweeted uh it's scaring me how in everybody is on the buffalo sabers as a quote-unquote dark horse it's quote-unquote sleeper because it never works out when it's everybody people picking the oilers to win the cup yeah, last year yeah it never works out i had the oilers and i was like well this fucking sucks. They <laughs> yeah. are for sure not like everybody yeah. I knew and trusted and liked yeah. was like Bruins and Oilers, and it wouldn't surprise me if the Oilers. But I was like, well, that's what I fucking thought. So this isn't gonna happen. The only- yeah, yeah. The the Sabers are like yep. kind of there. Yeah, yeah, and like everybody is pushing the timeline ahead a little bit and i still think that there's a good chance they're gonna be very good and make the playoffs this year but like it's a little bit of a bummer and a little bit disappointing that everybody seems to love them as much as i do now Man. but i will be able to say that i was i was all about them last year too i was all about the savers last year let's make it a sports show for like three more minutes david Krejci retiring if he hadn't retired i was thinking about it today it would have truly made this year's bruins team the most random motherfucking thing in the world. If he hadn't, if he ha- if, if he oh, came back, yeah. and you're just like, like again, like Lucic is doing another year, and he's got this great relationship with Boston and everything. And like, I, I I get that because he can. It makes more sense for Milan Lucic to keep playing as a bottom six forward. I think you're right. Like the da- the great <laughs> David Krejci to still be around for something that isn't really worth his time. Like, and when he came back for like one more run after spending a, a year overseas and then like had the run and yeah. then played half a season banged up on this team, that would be extremely random. I kind of w- would have liked this team more. Though I, I know that some people are legitimately like, hey, you know what? Got to rip the Band-Aid off. It's good that they actually are getting this turnover even if it's out of their hands because it's not like they've planned for this at all 
but like it's better to not have David Krejci and Bergeron and still be glomming onto this thing that just isn't gonna fucking happen. I disagree. Like it's good that Bergeron's doing his thing and continuing to live his life and everything. For the sake of this year's Bruins team being funny as shit, it would have been nice and funny and weird if Krejci was still there and Zaka, after being like, all right, he's going to have to be your number one center, you're like, okay, thank God. He doesn't have to be your number one <laughs> yeah, center anymore. people are talking themselves into it, and then now they have to be like, okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Pavel Zaka of one 40-point season in his career, and it came when he was playing wing with David Krejci I know, at center. I know, man. Like People are talking themselves into Zaka being okay as a 1C no yeah. <laughs> it's, i'm never gonna feel good about that david Krejci, i like pavel zaka more than most it seems but fuck man he should not be your one c i had such a great nostalgic day yesterday david Krejci retired which that's not necessarily a good or bad thing for me i'm indifferent uh but it just led to so much reminiscing with friends and telling stories about like what that because i fucking lucked out on that beat that my like the core that was there when I was there is all the fucking guys that you would have wanted to be there. Like Bergeron and Chara and Krejci and everything. And like, we were texting and arguing about like, how do you put like that Bruins core into tears, which I don't even like doing because I think that we're in a point now that it's like really, really done that everything involving those guys should just be a fucking party that like, how lucky were they to have Bergeron? How lucky were they to have Chara and Krejci and all these guys but uh so that happened and for the first time in a million years they're closing the handlebar is closing the south boston studio which is where one of the places that i went in my early days of going there uh and like made a lot of friends there and they're not cl they're transitioning it into i think a yoga thing that they're gonna do but i was like you know what i'm getting in one last class and uh the instructor who's a good friend of mine played like a shit ton of Kendrick and Moo just like in the olden days when I would go and it was just like all this great nostalgia that in a time where I frequently feel washed I th it was just nothing but looking back on shit positively like not thinking about like god how far removed you are yeah, from it or but like, like I'm so far away from this or like god it was so fucking stressful doing this or whatever and uh all this shit like David Krejci was a fucking hilarious person to cover. He was a great player, amazing to watch. Like, everyone said cerebral, but he fucking was. And just the ultimate, you go up to him, you have your questions. He doesn't fucking care. He's got a different thing that he wants to say, and he, and that's going to be your story. Yeah, what was – that happened recently where he just started to, uh, talk. oh, no, maybe it was you telling me a story about David I Krejci. I reminisce about, about that fucking guy a lot. About how he just started ripping into, like, the sticks that he was using. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. He was coming off, I think, an injury or something, and he had a really good game. So I went over, and I was like, hey – like was the knee giving you any trouble or whatever it was like the calf oh and he just goes uh these sticks i'm using they suck and i'm like what and he's like i'm a sponsored athlete so i can't use a different ki kind of stick they said that they were going to send me the ones that i usually use but they said that they're up i like so, that you abandoned the so, accent so that, yeah i know i'm sorry yeah, yeah um uh no, the only th impression that I could do of him was just like, you know what? <laughs> he would just start everything just like a little, just like restrained and a little gruff. But yeah, he's like, they, I can't use any other stick because I have a deal with these guys. So if I use another stick, I get in trouble. But they're sending me the wrong sticks and not the ones that I want. So what am I supposed to do? I have to play with this stick and it's just not the fuck, it's not the same. And it fucking su sucks. I don't know if he was swearing that much or whatever, but I was like, Okay. And the fun thing about that is that was in like blogging days where it's like, do I really need to write a game story right now? Or if I blog David Krejci on health, <laughs> these hockey sticks. sticks are the worst. <laughs> and that ended up being that then that like I would try to go for those kind of like random Shit's ass way look. Better, I'm dude. missing <laughs> I, I'm gonna miss out on telling you what happened, but I'm gonna give you something that uh I didn't know <laughs> five minutes. Like, I had no idea that David Krejci was all worked up about that. So, yeah, I look back on those days. It was There was a lot of, like, 
stress and uh for sure we've talked about this uh, imposter syndrome mm-hmm. but man oh man it was so fun so seeing all those guys kind of trickle out is uh wild well, but i'm they glad were so that you're feeling good. better about like things that happened a while ago why just because like i feel like that's like not to like I don't know how you're doing yeah. recently, but like when you are better today, I feel like it's easier to look back on shit that happened a while ago and oh, feel word. good about it. Yeah. And, and not be like, fuck, man, I miss I miss like that shit. Like everything well, sucks I, now. Yeah, I, I I think I'm perpetually in a mindset of like these can't be the good old days <laughs> like right now. Yeah, like this can't possibly be it. I remember <laughs> uh, when I was in high school. I was uh, waiting for somebody to pick me up, at, uh, or middle school. I was waiting for somebody to pick me up, and uh, my friend's older brother, who was a good friend of my sister's, uh, was waiting for his little brother, and he came by, and he sat on the bench, and we were just chatting, and uh, I was, he was like, so you're in high school next year, huh? And I was like, yeah, and he was like, telling you man it's gonna be and he wasn't saying it i'm like a oh, bro just you wait blah blah he was just like it's gonna these are gonna be the best days of your life and i was like first of all no wow <laughs> that's nuts i'm about to have the best days of my <laughs> life and then once i got to high school i was like yeah i mean everyone's experience is different these no, aren't the best days not. of my life <laughs> and then there's a the thing of like wait till you get to college and you have all this freedom college and college was, is i'm more likely to say there's amazing stuff that you can take from uh, hopefully that you can take from every uh every like stop. healthy stop of your life but i think that sometimes you put pressure on yourself like this has to be it this has to be i mean i had a, a horrible quarter life crisis of like it's probably only going to go down from here so why am I not killing it? And I would tell that to people and they'd be like, didn't you like immediately get the job that you were trying to get? How are you not killing it? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm not making a lot of money. And uh, oh, like when I go to like a, if I go to like a show or something, I'm worried that I'm going to miss stuff. And they're like, OK, well, that sounds like you just have like maybe a you work a crazy job, but also. Maybe you just totally haven't figured out work-life balance. Yeah, like how yet. to enjoy it. Right? Yeah. yeah. So we, I think that it's always easy to be like, things suck right now. This sucks right now. And then that view, that either colors something in the past as romanticized or, or as just, you said, like asking like, was it ever fucking good? Yeah, right. Like it, 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 you can spoil like what in 10 years from now you feel like you should have enjoyed by being so fucking worried about and like i have to deal with that shit too where it's like a lot of shit is going well for me right now and i'm not enjoying some of it because i just like i feel like so much is going on but when you kind of remove yourself from it you have to kind of remind yourself to be like hey try to enjoy this because it like maybe next year i won't have a job maybe next year Mm. like i i'll have to like i'll be no matter where you are in your life you're gonna have like shit that isn't going the way that you want it to go but you have to figure out a way to appreciate the stuff that is going well and like right now i feel like there is a potential for like this to be looked back on as the good old days like not to shine a lot too much of a light on some shit that we're doing but like we've got some exciting stuff about to be happening and like I I really want to make sure that I enjoy it and do well with it because I don't know if we get the opportunity again. Yeah, that's dude. That I am thinking exactly the same. Like, there's ways in which I'm asking myself, like, and I like good at all the things that I want to be doing or whatever. And that I honestly, this sounds vain, but like, I kind of throw away really quickly because there are a lot of people in every job who aren't that great at what they're doing and can still be successful if they're like good co-workers or nice people or whatever and And i bet like a lot of those people don't think about how well they're doing and like that allows them to be doing better than they should be (laughs) i think at my last job the most i was quote unquote killing it was at a time that definitely a lot of people were like not at my job but like on the outside were like how is this idiot getting away with this? <laughs> like, why? Like, what do they see in him or whatever? And it was just kind of like, uh, I, yeah, you're right. There's it, like a mental paralysis that can prevent you from like 
doing well because oh, you're yeah. con- constantly worried about doing well that it prevents you from just like kind of taking shots. Do you know uh, the uh, term paralysis by analysis? No, but I, it's a bar. I, yeah, I I don't know if I've heard that, but I can tell you exactly what it's just exactly what I just said. And it's, it's like overanalyzing you've done it, everything. I've done it. Yeah. Like how how many? I feel so annoying when I tell friends anything, but uh, when I tell friends ideas, I'm like, hey, been thinking of that, and I I have this kind of like view of myself that maybe this reference will be lost on you that I'm kind of like Stu Pickles, you know. He's Tommy's dad. I know. And he's an inventor. Yeah. And he's always coming up with something. And it's like, okay, cool, Stu. Sure you are. Blah, blah. It's like a mix of that and uh, like the DJ who's always saying big things coming. Yeah. You know, that kind of guy. And uh, there's, I feel like I'm always coming up with ideas and then finding excuses to not do them. Yeah. And the excuses are just like so piss poor and i've talked about it with my therapist i've talked about it with you i've like actually written out and listed like which things that i want to be doing aren't happening for real reasons there isn't enough time someone isn't available for it and which ones are just like fucking rubbish especially too now with like the internet and sort of like how many quote-unquote content creators there are like my problem has been like thinking about things and overanalyzing them and being like well somebody else is already doing this i need to do something that's completely different it's like there's so there's just like so much happening right now that doing something that nobody else has ever tried or ever done a little bit differently is just not going to happen. So if you want to do it and you want to do it in like your way or do it like authentically, uh, like that's kind of what I've been trying to tell myself is to just like, all right, somebody else might be doing this thing, but they're, they're not doing it as you. Exactly. And there's, uh, somebody, well, uh, I saw recently, uh, someone attempt something that is, I'm not going to, say what it is or who it is or whatever, but something uh, that I've outspokenly been like, this is an idea. This is, uh, you know about it. We've done some episodes of it. Wink, wink, wink. Uh, Put it out there. And somebody else is doing something that is not exactly it, but like, hey, come on. And my reaction to that can be, what the hell? But it's like, Dude, where's yours then? Yeah, like, right, like, exactly. Like, if, if if you're so passionate about it, then, like, fucking and, where and, is it? And I think that's what leads to people becoming, like, bitter old men. Is to being like, we, I could have done that. We could have done that. It's like, okay, well, you didn't even fucking try. Yeah, man. So don't get mad at the people who do it and find success with it. Like, it can be annoying and it can be, like, you can easily, like, develop resentment for people that do it worse than you think that you would have done it but at the end of the day they did it and you didn't like that's that's i don't know i have a hard time grappling with that sometimes did i so i've told you on the boat uh i'm fucking yapping about these goddamn ideas and nicole yang who's always on the boat like will check in and be like hey are you going to make this thing and i don't think that she's like Maybe like she's trying to hold me accountable you. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, she's definitely not saying it for the sake of, like, I wanted to see this thing. But just, like, hey, uh, you seemed pretty jazzed about that idea. And at least a couple of people said, hey, good idea. Good idea. Do it. The yeah. next step might be doing it. Doing it. <laughs> and at least right now, I'm in. You never know when these waves are going to come and go. But I have kind of caught a wave of this is a good idea. I want to do it right now. And Mm -hmm. it's like, I've spent a lot of today editing a video about Fleetwood Mac that I actually think you're going to. Yeah. I mean, you told me that you were doing, you were doing this today for the first time when you were like, I'm editing this thing and it's taking up so much of my time. Like, that's why not to like, not to like pat you on the back or whatever, but like there was a time where you'd be like, I have this idea. I think I might do it at some exactly. point. Now you Bye-bye. don't even tell me your ideas. You're just like, hey, I'm, I'm halfway through this thing I didn't even tell you about. Yeah. So that's a better place to be than being like, hey, might do this in a couple months. I mean, it's the uh, equivalent of 
a lot of friends send each other fragments of songs and like what is one of my friends going to do with a fucking 15 second clip of a killer pre-chorus i wrote work on it brother cool <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you've written part nice of the song. song where's the rest of it <laughs> literally and so i've gotten at least a little better of like verse chorus verse chorus before you ship it off and to it somebody. doesn't have to be fleshed out it doesn't have to be the final product yeah just uh, it, just have it be more than like, like a, one a, second a, more than a morsel it Actually, I was going to say, people can't get excited about that. I'm a fucking nerd, so if you actually do send me a killer pre-chorus, I'll be like, oh, man, this is... But, like, the average, like, person smarter than me, if they hear something that actually has some meat on it, they'll probably get excited and say, like, whoa, this is great, and then you're going to be encouraged to keep going. So far, by the way, this podcast is just, like, chum for mocking dudes who do like uh we're not doing financial advice but this has the vibe of like i sleep one hour a day <laughs> and before i was doing that i was bleh. my day starts at 6 a.m and ends at noon i see that clip all the time and i watch it in its entirety <laughs> I, I, every I love time it. I, I love it so much i have much. no idea who that guy is <laughs> no idea. i don't know if it's serious but i love it I, I stack that up over a week i'm kicking your I'm butt i'm kicking your stack, butt stack that up over a I month i love that guy i'm honestly. really kicking your butt i stack honestly that love up that over guy. a year you're toast i kind of like imagine and, being toast because another guy's <laughs> not sleeping i he's like i've got suddenly i've got 64 days in a week it's like pfft brother <laughs> oh my god there, i, I kind of love that guy and i i could see where like I'm the sure bones are <laughs> i can see where like the bones of a good idea are in there because if you're like oh, i've i got six hours to make my make my day productive I then mean, you're being productive but you've seen you that should... episode of science like that is an episode of seinfeld yeah yeah, yeah. and i yeah. saw i've seen it presented a million different ways but i saw it presented as like uh jerry Literally nothing. <laughs> Kramer. My first day starts blah, blah, blah. Stack that up over a week. I'm kicking your butt. That guy rocks. I love the progression of I'm kicking your butt to I'm toast. Your toast. Or to, to your, your toast. toast. Yeah. Man. Hey, sorry. Just a quick break here to tell you about our friends at Muggsy Jeans. They make the most comfortable jeans, chinos, shorts, and joggers ever. You got buttery soft patented stretch materials that look stylish, but they're also insanely comfortable. Never too baggy, never too tight. Frankly, they're the best things to happen to legs, legs since chairs. God damn it, that's a bar. Never in human history have legs been so spoiled by pure softness and comfort while also looking so damn good. The guys at Muggsy have one mission in life. Give every guy the confidence to walk blindly into their closet, grab whatever they want, and know that whatever they pick is going to have them looking good but also feeling even better. You don't have to sacrifice comfort to look good, and you'll never have to shop anywhere else ever again. Muggsy... I'll be honest, we're still waiting on our care package. We told you, you know, probably about a month ago, we've heard so many good things. We heard that there was a care package on the way. We still haven't gotten it. Me and DJ, we're waiting, though. We're waiting, and we can't wait until it hits our doorstep because, again, the guys at Washed, they have nothing but good things to say about Muggsy. Uh, also, if you're trying to to get in, to slip into something comfortable but also cool for the, what's remaining of the summer, they've got Cool Max denim that are like air conditioners for your legs. Uh, it's a very cool summer jean that uh, that keeps you cool but also stylish and also comfortable. So head to Muggsy.com for 10% off using promo code BRUNCH. That's 10% off some of the most comfortable and premium jeans, chinos, swimwear, shorts, you name it. If you can put it on your legs, Muggsy sells them. They also offer free shipping and returns, so there's no risk in giving them a try. And hey, if you're in the Chicago, Boston, D.C., or Austin, Texas area, be sure to head downtown and check out their storefront as well. Good vibes every time. They'll also slip you a beer if you're of age. So uh, that's 10% off Muggsy.com using promo code BRUNCH. All right, back to the show. Uh, good start to the the, the pod. We this didn't, is a we big don't have therapy like, episode, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> nice little heart-to-heart -heart between buds. We don't have like a, we watched this for the thing. But oh, I do. I mean, I've watched a shitload I've of stuff. I've on, I'm on a movie tear, I, and, I, and I hate to tell, tell you, but 
I figured out Letterboxd. Oh no. Yeah. I'm like I'm like putting reviews on Letterboxd now. Not like not like full reviews. I'm doing like two to three sentence reviews on Letterboxd because I figured out that it doesn't actually like it doesn't quote unquote log your movies unless you actively log them. I can never find mine. Yeah, so you're not logging. You're only I'm assuming that you're only scoring. Yeah. Yeah, if you score, it doesn't actually log them. Cool app. <laughs> I know it doesn't really make sense like because you can log it without writing a review, you just have to hit the log button, but if you just score it, it won't log it, which is weird. Yeah. I don't know if I could get into that. What did uh, what did you watch? I know you had a Tom Cruise marathon. I did. Uh, I have been uh, last night. I did Asteroid City. Um, uh, I still haven't finished that. I didn't care for it. Oh really? Two and a half stars. Whoa. Yeah, I didn't really care for it. Um, let me see. I had to leave after the alien came down. Oh really? Yeah. Or like did you, like you had to leave? Yeah, I was at the theater and something. I I don't know what came up, but something came up. I had to leave. Okay um yeah it was all right it was fine um i watched collateral okay fucking awesome movie uh you know have you seen, seen that. jamie fox plays the cab driver oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. very very cool movie uh tom cruise awesome villain mm. uh i watched batman begins which i think is the first time that i've seen batman begins from start to finish Wow, that's a Christopher Nolan film. It sure is. Yeah. The only Christopher Nolan movie I'm missing at this point. It has Killian Murphy and that Armenian guy. The Armenian guy? Who's that Armenian? He plays the... Uh, no, is it... No, the, the Armenian guy's in the second one. He's the guy that uh, shoots... Joseph Gordon-Levitt. No, that shoots the commissioner and... Yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly yeah. who you're talking about. The scary looking guy. Yeah. yeah. I think he's Armenian. I think his last name's Armenian. <laughs> okay. He looks Armenian. <laughs> okay. He does look Armenian. Um, I watched... Uh, the only Christopher Nolan movie I'm missing at this point, by the way, is Memento. And I still haven't gone back wow. and watched. Um, so, Batman Begins, uh, The Prestige, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I watched Silence of the Lambs for the first time. Um, really? Yeah. I watched... Uh, I don't care too much about Silence of the Lambs. Really? Yeah. It's good, but like it's a it's a it's, one it's of a those, really good it's movie. It's like a horror movie that's an actual really yeah, good exactly. movie. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's like yeah, that's the best way to put it. I watch Ex Machi Machina. Mm -hmm. Uh and then I watched Donnie Brasco for the first time. Whoa. You should have watched Donnie Darko. Got I lots have. of tears for I have. tears. We watched Donnie Darko for the podcast for Jill and Hall Week. Yeah. And, and that, that movie was fucking wild. Yeah, and then we did Dan O'Day. It was the best. Donnie Brasco, awesome movie. Uh I watched uh, uh the prestige yeah How, i watched it you in, watched it over like four days i watched it over so many days i watched it probably <laughs> in the crazy, most chunks i've watched a movie it's a crazy movie to break up into like eight chunks i, I would seriously guess six segments i watched do, it do in. you like recall what rent the rental expired and i had to get it again which i told you that and you were like holy shit i was like that actually happens to me i know that that happens to you a lot but having that happen for the prestige was crazy like my my cable box went out Oh, or like um my whatever i watched it on stopped working like halfway through the prestige or like mm. three quarters of the way and i remember being like yo if i couldn't watch the end of this movie right now i would be furious because i'm dying to find out what what's happening it was incredible as just like t it's it was like having a chocolate bar <laughs> and just like licking it taking like a tiny little nibble and then being like i'm not gonna eat for the rest of the day uh, this is making it sound way more yeah. sexual but like just like it's making it sound way less cool no it was incredible just like every second of it was satisfying that's so weird because like that's one of those movies that and like thought and i th i was thinking about it and some of it i think as a result like everything seemed kind of obvious uh yeah well but, you gave yourself too much time to think about it yeah that's one of those movies that like it starts off a little slow and you're like what the hell's going on here but it continues to build and it just keeps stacking on each other and stacking on each other and stacking on each other and so i feel like stopping so much would kind of take away from that oh uh, it rocked although i uh, may contain spoilers of uh the 2006 film the prestige but you're uh, really and, and good at knowing when every movie comes out, like the year. So when I made this uh, uh, Lan the Fleetwood Mac video, I referenced Landslide. Yeah. And when you – I had to reshoot everything in this video because my camera setting had something weird on, so I was pissed. And after I – when I went to edit, I was like, shit, I set a lot of dates without checking. 
And then I kind of laughed to myself. I was like, you nailed them off. I didn't get those dates wrong. <laughs> Fucking self-titled album came out in 75. Rumors was 77. Get out of here. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Make it Dane spoilers of the 2006 uh, Christopher Nolan. Uh, what would it be? Psycho thriller? Uh, Psychological thriller? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Prestige. Uh, Maybe a mystery? I, I was, yeah. I, I was laughing to myself. that like, yo, every time you see somebody hairy. It's one of them in disguise. <laughs> That's true. And they kept like getting each other where somebody hairy would pop up. They'd be like, I need a volunteer. Like, and it would always be a hairy guy. It and he'd was come like, up and then they'd show the eyes and you're like, Okay, Especially I guess like that's Angier. After you've been got one time by a guy wearing a wig. Motherfucker, or like, or you f- just used this trick <laughs> on him. How are you surprised by him doing it to you? It's like that. It's like a, it's like a Mission Impossible movie where you're like, ah, oh, that guy is being weird. He looks weird. That's probably a mask. And it's a mask. <laughs> yeah. So all of that, I was like, yo, if you see somebody hairy, it's the, the person in disguise. It's one of them in disguise. And then at the end, you're like, whoa. The hairy guy, like, is that guy? Yeah, Amazing. I mean, it's uh, it's very funny. Uh, that that movie, like, I thought I had had it figured out, and I was like, so stupid, so obvious, and then I was like, yo, you were putting that right in front of my face, so much so that I was even mocking it. I mean, also like, I was one, familiar he, with the game. One of them just like loses hands, like fingers halfway through the movie, and he still is able to. To like deceive the guy and mm-hmm. with a disguise on his face, to just look at his hands. Great ScarJo performance. Very good. Great Very performances good. all around. Great uh, David Bowie performance. David Bowie. Oh my God! I texted you. Not a great David Bowie performance. But no. Whatever. I texted you and I was like, I recognized this guy a little bit, but I couldn't place him. Uh, and motherfuckers, David Bowie. And you were like. That movie came out a while ago, and I was like, "Yeah, David Bowie was alive." Yeah, I watched. Uh, I, I when I was watching it, you'd already told me that, and I was like, "Would I have been able to figure out that, that was David Bowie, or would I have gone crazy?" I just don't think you. And ever I know look and like David Bowie. Like, I, yeah, I, it's just not like a I'd place been like, that oh, you. That's look. one of those famous actors. How many like movies a, was he in? Uh, Labyrinth, right? I don't know much about David Bowie's acting career. Me neither. I do know his music career, which was quite good the only thing that i know about david bowie in movies is how much it bothers me that perks of being a wallflower they use that david bowie song i think it's heroes yeah and good song and they they can't figure out who it's by and this like this little crew in high school prides themselves on being weirdos and uh outliers who don't fit in with the cool crowd and they, and they know. don't know a David Bowie song. I don't know like how well that a tracks. very popular David Bowie song. I don't know how well that tracks. That's it a, it that's bothers a, that's me a, so much. That's a fair issue to take with the movie. I looked up uh, David Bowie movies, and uh, one of the first things that came up is just a picture of one of the SpongeBob guys <laughs> uh, taking a picture. So I don't know what, what that's about. David Have Bowie did. Uh, if David Bowie's involved in SpongeBob, he voiced Patrick Starr. Man, imagine. If I still didn't watch Spongebob when, like, Ween and David Bowie are part of it, it oh is boy, such I a feel w- nuts. such a wild thing that you're like, ah, I've never seen any of this, and it just involves so many things that you like. I'm just, yeah, I'm just a little too, but it's like, uh, it's like the thing I try to tell you to watch, the, uh, the Andor, but you won't watch it. Uh, it's like, I know it's good, but... Yeah, the I thing that you told me to watch. Haven't, I've been telling you, you were saying that you didn't know about... Uh, about Andor, and I was saying you should check it out. Uh, I also watched uh, The Meg 2. Did you? Why did you tell me this? Maron. Uh, we said that we were going to review it for the podcast. We can still review it for the podcast. We could. I, I don't think that people are waiting for it. No, so definitely not. So I think that if it takes us another week to do it. I like, also, like, it's 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 been spoiled a little bit, like, not in that. The plot of the movie has say, been spoiled. What but, plot is there to spoil? But like it's been spoiled by the fact that it's it's like the unanimous take on it is that it's so bad that it's not fun. That's like, the, the the first first half of the movie is that way. Like I I really wanted to leave okay. the, the first half of it, but the second half is just like you know what we're gonna make this of the bad guys are chasing us movie, and I was like oh, all right I can do like. Fucking uh, Jason Statham, 
a couple of other nice people that I can do. Mm -hmm. I can't do. We're walking on the ocean floor and maybe there's a shark there and maybe there isn't. There better be a fucking shark there or a dinosaur or whatever the fuck you're trying to stop. I don't even... Megalodon is a, is a shark. shark, but it's like a dinosaur. It's like... Yeah, it's just a like a prehistoric shark that's just fucking so big that it defies logic. And every time there's a sequel to one of these movies, like a Jurassic Park or whatever, it's always yep. like the first one, they encounter this thing that eats everybody and they're like, fuck, we shouldn't have done that. The second one, it's always someone who's super fucking excited that that thing is still around and alive. <laughs> it's like, well, you're the fucking free space on who gets eaten. <laughs> That's true. Um, Wasn't Jason Statham, by the way, has a very, very small part in Collateral. Ooh, what does he do? He's literally in the opening scene where uh, he exchanges briefcases with, uh, with Tom Cruise, and then you never see him again. That's a good opening scene guy. Yeah, Jason yeah, but it's like a it's like a cock tease. You never see J Jason Statham again in the movie. Uh, famously, that happened in uh, Hotel Artemis. Mm, yeah, with with a guy that you want to see much more of. What so is so disappointing? Like at least they killed him, so you weren't waiting for him to come back. Like they killed Misty, yeah. so you're like, all right, hey, he's done. And he's also not an actor, so it's but like, like, what if he was? <laughs> what if there were like two cops in the movie? So it's like Jenny Slate. And Josh Tillman are like, let us in, please. We're bleeding. And like every scene with Jenny Slate, which memory served was fine. Also, Josh Tillman's there. Would love it. Or if Charlie Day, I think, is being a, an asshole in the movie. Right. I don't He's sitting in a room being an asshole. An asshole. Yeah. What if like his buddy is there and it's, it's Josh. Uh, Tillman. It's Josh Tillman. Uh, last movie thing. Everyone's pissed at Rachel Ziegler. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she acted, I, I'm not saying that she is this, but she kind of acted like a douchebag on a red carpet. And there's a clip that's going viral. And I, I understand that, like, the, the point she was making, she was do, doing now so Now there's well. counter discourse. Oh, really? Yeah. There's, like, if you have a problem uh, with this, then blank? No, I'll let you finish the, the telling of the story, and then I'll present you with the counter discourse. Okay, I think that if you listen to this podcast, we always mock stuff in movies of like, wait, why is it okay that this is happening or whatever? And she points out in Snow White, she's like praying for this prince who's borderline stalking her. So that's weird. I think though, with Disney, you got it's like with Swifties. You gotta tread really fucking lightly and not just openly mock it. And I think a lot of Disney people who are gonna watch that movie are like who the fuck is this person that's been alive for five minutes telling me how I can watch my Disney? And obviously yeah. there's been there's a lot of things over the years that not so hot about Disney. But I'm like, ooh, yeah. Like from the second I watch it, I'm like, oh no, you can't be douchey about this. They're gonna Yeah, they're, they're gonna come for you. So that's that that's gonna attach to my the counter discourse uh thing because everybody's been there's been a lot of people pushing back on like how much hate she's getting and being like well, Harrison Ford has openly said how much he hates Star Wars, and you celebrate him and like say that he's being like a badass by by going out there and, and talking about how much he hates this big property that he's in. I so don't the, watch the, Star Wars, so what we're gonna separates have to say Affleck and uh, Armageddon for me to understand the reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, what separates that to me, other than he's a man, we can address it. He's yeah. a man. Uh, no, it's. It's the, there's not a smugness about it. Like the smug, Rachel Ziegler yeah, had like a, it, it yeah. had like a big smugness, not even that she's mocking it, but like that she's doing like the world a big favor by changing it around or like presenting a new take on Snow White. Like I, that's a weird thing to do. Be like, just be like, if she were to be like, I'm really proud that we're doing like a, a different version of it that seem, that's like more more in line with today's values or more in line. Like, I don't think there would be a big pushback on that, no. but she's being well, no, like, there'd be like, like chuds would be like, Oh, it's woke. But like, yeah, but that's going to happen yeah. with everything. But like, I think where I, where, where everybody's getting a little upset is that she's being like, and fuck the patriarchy. You're all welcome. Yeah. Which like, I think that the, the intention is, is fine. Like it's, it's good. Like to, to present, 
a better spin on something that like can be seen as problematic but to be like you're fucking welcome that's that's where everybody's like all right enough it's non-harmful douchebaggery and i remember in college uh i had a friend who i was like oh yeah that guy's a douchebag but he's like a nice guy yeah and he's right. not like doing it he doesn't do anything wrong but just like He's a fucking douchebag. And uh, that's what... uh, So that's what she was doing. She was just being a douchebag about it. She is being a douchebag about it, for sure. And I... uh, We should should reappropriate that there's like, you know, in... uh, uh, Shit. um, In uh, The Wizard of Oz. Like, are you a good witch or are you a bad witch? Like, there's good douchebags. Yeah, definitely. So, I loved her in West Side Story. Who's who is the the first person that comes to your mind when you think of good douchebag? Uh, Joey Swole. Uh, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, I was gonna say like Miles Teller. Yeah, Miles uh, Teller. Yeah, yeah. Miles Teller, pretty good douchebag. There's some Rob Gronkowski, good douchebag. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and l- look, like I'm probably a douchebag in some ways. I'm probably a blowhard in a lot of ways. Like, but there, these things aren't necessarily like bad character things so she would just kind of be no yeah, i think i think that like there's a um there's like a pr training that could iron this out yeah like and and like make how, it a little bit more palatable i like how we started as like oh god you see this shit that rachel ziegler did and we're like <laughs> pretty fine uh, <laughs> no it's just like because I, I oh gee again Is we got a phone or is it light? that's a light uh no it's just like I I don't want to root against the movie. I don't want to root against her, but I m- like mainly don't want the like oh, this this is woke to get like tied in with the people like oh she's acting like an asshole. Yeah. Like I don't want to be put in that camp when I'm being like this person's acting like an asshole. It reminds me of the Taylor Swift thing that's currently ongoing with me. <laughs> Podcast over. Now, uh episode title uh, good douchebag. Yes. Um yeah, the Taylor Swift thing that's going on with you is tough because there's just a uh, a lot of fallacies. In, there, there, there's a rush. Pete uh, shared a video of someone during the bridge of Cruel Summer at the Eras Tour, which I've been biting my tongue on that bridge for a long time. That bridge is so fucking lame. Uh, but I disagree. Love it and I disagree. Love I love Cruel Summer. It. I love Getaway Car. Oh, I, yeah, I know like, a lot of people. I love, love Cruel it. Summer. But there's a video of someone filming themselves screaming along, like which, like. Not, like not even screaming like you're expected to be screaming at a taylor yeah, swift concert we've done this it. person is fucking screaming to the craziest really degree just like and i i talked recently with uh my pal julian we went to uh kendrick lamar concert in new york uh i don't know five six seven years ago j-rock was opening we were so excited and when j-rock came out Maybe not everybody that was there was super excited about J-Rock, although a lot of people uh, were. But, like, Julian and I were really into it. And we were, like, yelling, and we were just having a great time. And we were like, was that cool or was that not cool? That, like, we were just, like, totally there. Like, "Eh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, all that stuff. Or, like, if you're at, like, a rock concert, be like, woo! Or, like, do the woo! <laughs> during a fucking guitar solo or whatever like there's some things like that that are kind of on the line but uh, so that those are the comparisons that i would make by the way the the comparison that people were making was well at sporting events people scream when a team wins in overtime <laughs> which is like i don't i i don't want to be crazy in this argument but just like v- the the we, when you're celebrating something that happens in overtime the the play is over. The stu- even if it's, it's just a, a goal, of, even if it's play. like a regular a regular time goal, like the performance is by all intents and purposes over. There's nothing else to see. It just happened, and you're celebrating that it happened. But to like be screaming in the middle of a play, or like be making yourself the main character in that moment, it's and like what you're talking about, is like I, bouncing I, I, around is different. Like. I don't I hate this person, by the way. No, I I, no. I just like it's. 
I compare it to reclining on the plane, where it's like, yes, this is the most fun she could possibly have in this moment, which God bless, but like that's no. not fun for other people. And I hope that she doesn't like you got a lot of Twitter followers, and I'm not trying to guilt trip you. I hope she doesn't feel bad that people are sharing her video, which and I know you can get into will she post or whatever, but like I hope she doesn't feel bad that people are sharing it. And having this big conversation about this uh, or whatever, but it's just like a, it's the most fun that she could have in that moment, and it takes away from other people's. Maybe fun. like yeah. maybe like my the reason that I posted it was like that is literally my worst nightmare as a concert goer to be next to somebody who's like making it all about them and being so distracting that I can't enjoy the show. Like it's it's happened in small spurts, not to that degree. Like what that person was, but I understand it's a Taylor Swift show. It's elevated a little bit. And I know that Taylor Swift tells people to scream during that bridge. Mm. So whatever. But like when somebody is either like screaming so loud that I can't hear the performer or taping themselves and acting like a lunatic, both of those things are extremely distracting from like what I went there to do. I'll, the last thing I'll say on the sports comparison, uh, and I, I found it so weird that like there had to be some oh this is what this really says about sports or music or whatever it was just, like really is as simple I at least for me as like yo that's not the most considerate thing to right. all the people that that's are the people around that there. are like, like I don't think you were making a commentary on what you're allowed to do no. in a sporting event or whatever and, and like, so many of the responses were like let people enjoy themselves god damn you're miserable and it's like no I want to let people enjoy themselves I want to let the 15 people around this person enjoy themselves rather than just that person have getting to do whatever they want to do and I've seen people act that extreme at sporting events and they get kicked out <laughs> yeah. or they or the usher or uh, wh whomever they uh, I don't want to end with a pre preposition, but uh, whoever they're with, fuck it, uh, will either bring them down or yeah. whatever. I mean, there was a lot of response to like like making it like a sexist thing, being like, oh, you hate w seeing women enjoy themselves like men do this all the time at sporting events. Yeah, like this just in men and women can be annoying in public. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and maybe maybe there's like a a a a gender element to it, but I, I really don't think in this case there is. I was at a Sarah Bareilles concert, and uh, she was singing "Gravity," which is in the early days that a was like John the, Mayer tune, the big yeah John Mayer cover. That was mm -hmm. the big number that uh, she would do, and. Uh, I actually think she sang it a cappella. It's normally just her and the piano, and it's this really somber song, and it's got this really, really dramatic, good bridge. Taylor Swift, take notes. And <laughs> she sang it a cappella, and you could hear a pin drop in the place, and a guy that was standing near me was singing along an octave lower, and I was be so devastated. I was so devastated because, and I know, like, hey, we'll just block him out to him. Or I, I couldn't. Maybe it's my ADD. I don't know. I was devastated. And <laughs> I said devastated 100 times. If it sounds like I'm being dramatic, that moment meant that much to me. <laughs> and I really, really loved this idea that I'm, I'm going to hear this song, just this one beautiful voice. And look. That moment meant a ton to that guy. He was singing along to his favorite song. It's just the give or take of... Yeah, like, try to enjoy yourself as much as you possibly can without taking away the enjoyment from other people around you. And we're not always going to do it correctly. Perfectly, correct, Lord yeah. knows I've been annoying to people at concerts, I'm sure. Although, I kind of doubt it because I don't really talk at concerts. Like, I'm pretty plugged in i i do believe that i can always find a way to being be annoying the most but. the most you talk as somebody who's attended many concerts with you the most you talk is in the first five seconds of a song and you oh. deliver like one sentence and being like not like hey this is that song but you're like you just like make a, a passing comment about what's about to happen a little thing or <laughs> yeah. something which i look i don't always need to do that so maybe and i i know that you're not saying this but you could be like you know I love the the beginning of a song 
and I love just when it washes over you. And I would rather, like, if you say, like, and I would rather not get any fun facts or commentary, I maybe my feelings would be hurt a little bit. I don't think so. I think I'd more be like, huh, I do do that. But I know that everybody's different. But that's like a fleeting thing. It's yeah. like it's over in two seconds after you share your thought. And it's, <laughs> and it's like, okay, now I get to enjoy the song. You know what's funny, though? Another time at a Sarah Burrell's concert, um, she was doing this drum intro with uh, – uh, she was doing this drum intro, banging on these drums. There was a moment in time where uh, putting drums at the front of the stage and banging on them was like everything that every band and artist did. Fun did it. Any band you'd go to see, I mean, Haim was big into doing it. Oh, yeah. It. Lot they of still like, do it. Drum, boom, boom, jam, dum, dum. Yeah, but I mean, Haim has to do it because I think it's like a, don't forget, we play drums. Yeah, thing. right. Like, yo, like, we're all good drummers. Don't get it twisted. Um, but, so she was doing, uh, dun, do, do, da, do, do, ba, ba, and uh, they hadn't played any notes yet, but just because it was in 6-8 time, I said to the person next to me, I was like, ooh, this is going to be Machine Gun. And... The guy in front of me turns around and he goes, DJ? And I was like, <laughs> ah, fuck. Like, I don't know if I know this guy. I'm like, do we know each other? And he was, uh, it was Joe McDonald's boss who followed me on Twitter. And he was just like, I think that uh, just like what I just overheard just kind of tracked yeah, for it could only from come you. from you. And he bought me beers the rest of the night. That's and incredible. I got, blackout drunk so i you apparently yeah it's fair play i i do that but yeah i mean i think it just all comes down to uh what's best for you versus what's best for everybody else i yeah and like i don't want to make it about like, i know that you said jail but i wanted to say i mean i always say uh look no one's going to jail so it's tough that you did say jail. So she's like, going to my personal jail because that is my personal hell for a concert going experience is being stuck next to that person. Uh, I think that we're going to be in a similar situation uh, for the boss next week. We're not officially going to the boss. Yeah, next but week. like the Springsteen's biggest fans are all almost dead. That so, is true. Like they, if they do that, they're going to die literally right there. That's true. Um, we uh, I will note, by the way, and Pete won't deny this, we've screamed along at Taylor Swift concerts yeah, before. But, you're supposed to. But there's the... Don't film yourself. Don't make yourself the main character. Don't, like, match the, can... en match the energy level of the people around you. Yeah, but, but I mean, you, you can film yourself. You, uh, again, I, I don't want to... I, 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 I think it's a combination of the two things. It's not a commentary on this person. It's a commentary on that person. One moment that is not how I would like to be or something that I'd like to be around. But there is a thing about screaming at concerts. We were talking before we uh, hit the record button of maybe it's the thing as you get older, but you like kind of pick your spots for what you're actually screaming and what you're lip syncing. Like I have videos of us at uh, Reputation Tour yeah. where like – this is why we can't have nice things. We're all packed in. We're taking selfie videos and we're really doing like every fifth word because it's going to be a long night. Yeah. And you don't want to lose your voice, which is also like what people said in response to that. That woman is like, they're like, she probably wasn't doing this all night because you literally can't. Yeah. So like, yeah, if it's like a, you got to pick your spots. I think I do got to say uh, she's long overdue for a compliment. The fit was great. Oh, uh, Ivy. Yeah. yeah. It was the, yeah. the Ivy outfit. Yeah. Yeah. Very creative. And like, I like, I like this girl's energy. I just wish that she brought it down like six notches. And I, Ivy's one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs off folklore and evermore. So <laughs> I'm thinking now I want to go to uh, one of the fall dates, which, yes, I can believe the Taylor Swift. I do want to go. Added dates to a I tour. Know. I want to go. We should go just. For the fits, I would be Ivy, but I'd be like Wrigley. Ivy. <laughs> I would just you like, like cover my suit. Yes. Yeah. Wait, what did you, you say? What a suit? ghillie suit? What's that? Like, you know, like when snipers 
oh, I yeah. want to blend in with yes, the grass. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I won't do that because I think there's like troublesome that, imagery there. I th- and I think that people would be like, "Yo, what the fuck is that guy about to get into?" That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that just the the vibes wouldn't be good. Yeah. But shit. Uh, if you did a ghillie suit while also like covering it in sparkles, then you might be like, you're covering covering a threatening thing with a non-threatening thing, and maybe it evens out. What if I did like Oilers hat, blue tank, brown watch, uh, some navy shorts? <laughs> yeah, I'd be <laughs> me he he <laughs> me. Oh, we oh, love no. Taylor Swift. Oh, no. How long has this gone? <laughs> I think we're running out. All done. Jesus.